Prosperity. 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 Yeah. All right. So awesome. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we're recording. So watch you watch what you say. No racial slurs. Dang it. Yeah, sorry, Ro. Let's let's keep it. Let's clamp down those racial slurs. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming. Well, not assuming. Are you, are you giving me the answer? Yeah. Okay. Pause for a second. I want everybody to answer. Okay. So remember that elbow thing we learned yeah. five minutes ago? So we're talking about what the velocity time curve is going to look like based on a distance time curve that looks like this. Remember, the distance time curve, its slope is velocity. So if you think it's a horizontal line, give me an arm like this. If you think it's a vertical line, give me an arm like this. If you think it's a diagonal line, give me an arm like this. Okay, let's take a look. And make sure we use the right arm too. Some of you are basically giving me a, okay, good. There we are. So we got, we got vertical, 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 horizontal, diagonal, horizontal. The whole back row thinks it's horizontal. Okay, those are the people you want to study with. Because the slope of the distance time curve is velocity. What's the slope here? Start a number. Uh, two. Two. What's the slope here? Two. What's the slope here? Two. What's the slope here? Two. Then wouldn't it make sense that everywhere where that slope is two, the velocity should just be two? Yeah. Anyone taking calculus in here? Okay. Pre-calculus? Pre good. So um, there's a word I'm going to give you. You're going to hear it in calculus, and you're going to hear it in pre-calculus. It's called <coughs> derivative. Derivative. Derivative is basically a fancy way of saying slope at an individual point. Okay. Is everything okay? Yeah. All I'm right. Just making so, sure you can see the whole thing. It cool. looks All a right. little low. So the slope of the distance time curve is velocity. If you like fancy mathy terms, the derivative of the distance time curve is velocity. The slope is everywhere the same here, so it should be everywhere the same here. Now, why did I put my velocity line in the positive up here and not down here in the negative? Okay. Yeah, exactly. This has got a positive slope. So we would expect with a positive slope, we should make the line in the distance time curve positive. Okay positive and we talked about how the velocity is moving away at a constant speed. Does this look like constant speed? Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if this is resonating with you. It's bouncing with your ears and you have a pretty good idea what's going on. If you need me to go over it again, put your hand up and wave it around. All right. Now, let's talk about a new concept. The idea of acceleration. If Velocity is how displacement changes, then acceleration is how velocity changes. Exactly. So this is my velocity curve. If we were to describe the motion here, it would be moving away at a constant speed. It's velocity. And the slope of the velocity curve, velocity time curve, is acceleration. 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 So, take five seconds or ten seconds and chat with your neighbor. What do you think the velocity time curve is going to look like? Sorry, what do you think the acceleration time curve is going to look like based on this velocity time? So, take ten seconds and chat with your neighbor. <laughs> If it's moving forward at a constant speed, it's not really accelerating. Yeah, so acceleration is the change of velocity. So velocity is the change of displacement, acceleration is the change of velocity. So the slope of the velocity curve is acceleration, just like the slope of the displacement curve is velocity. So slope of going down. Slope of this is this, slope of this is this. All right, so with that crazy elbow thing, what do you think the acceleration curve is going to look like? Is it horizontal, diagonal, vertical? Looks like almost all horizontals, a couple diagonals. It's horizontal. In fact, not only is it horizontal, it's horizontal where on the graph? Zero, exactly. It's horizontal and it's at zero. Because what is the slope of a horizontal line? 
There is zero. 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 So the slope, it's here at zero, here at zero, here at zero, here at zero, here. It's all zero. Zero. Okay. So going down from displacement to velocity to acceleration, slopey, slopey, slopey. Slopey of this is this. Slopey of this is this. So the slopey of the velocity is acceleration. The slopey of displacement is velocity. Make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Later on, we'll learn something called integration, or integrals, or area under the curve. That's for another time. OK. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. OK. So we hammered out number one. That took uh, 15 minutes, so we should, we should be done with this in about four days. Number two, moving toward at a constant speed is down. So if this is moving away at a constant speed, shouldn't it make sense that, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna put it down here, or we're running out of space. Shouldn't this is moving <coughs> toward at a constant speed? And it should make sense because at each of these points in time, you're getting further and further away, and you're getting more further away the same amount at every point in time. In this one, moving toward constant speed. In the second graph, you are moving toward the origin, but still at a constant speed. Make sense? So what is the velocity curve going to look like for this line? Take five, ten seconds and chat with your neighbor. The velocity is going to be a straight line, but negative. For example, that's going to be negative. Since it's moving at a constant speed, but it's coming closer, the velocity is going to be negative, but it's going to be horizontal. I'm hearing a lot of good buzzwords. OK, so with your elbow, what's the shape of the line going to look like? Looks like horizontal wins it. And I heard lots of words. I heard below. I heard negative. Why did you say that? Uh, since it's moving, yes. negative slope. So if I was to draw the velocity time curve, would it look something like that? Yeah. 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 So again, you, you realize, hey, this has a negative slope, so my velocity curve better be negative. It's going to be constant, so it's going to be a horizontal line, but it's going to be negative. Cool? Yeah. Is that pretty much in agreement with what you're talking about? I mean, I okay. Am. What about acceleration? Acceleration is going to still be at zero. Yep, still horizontal and still zero. Because the slope of my velocity time curve still be zero, even though it be in the negative. Yes. Okay? Does this make sense so far? Yeah. And the last one says not moving. What is not moving going to look like in the dis displacement time? Horizontal. horizontal line. Yeah. And not moving it means at every point in time you're that far away and you're still 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 that far away. What is the slope of that line? Zero. 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 So what's this going to look like? Zero. Wow. zero. Horizontal. Horizontal at the zero. Like that, right? And what's uh, what's this one going to look like? Horizontal. Horizontal at the zero. All right. So you've now learned everything you need to know about graphical uh, velocity or graphical linear motion. Right. Cool. No, I'm joking, we still have more. Um, but let's take a pause here and assess where we are. If you understand that the slope of the displacement is velocity, give me a thumbs up. If you understand the slope of velocity is acceleration, give me a thumbs up. Okay. If you're comfortable with these graphs, give me two thumbs up. Excellent. Now I want to show you something kind of cool. Looking at the velocity curve, you can learn a lot about the velocity curve or from the velocity curve. If you know what's going on in velocity, you know what's going on in acceleration, and you know what's going on in displacement. When velocity is zero, how would you describe that motion? If something has a velocity of zero, how would you describe it? Standing still. Standing still, stopped, not moving. Yeah, yeah. So, so when we're here, this is uh, stopped. If you're right at the origin for velocity curve, you are stopped. And it should make sense if you're stopped, which of these lines matches a stopped motion? In displacement, which one is going to? One, two, or three? Three. 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 The horizontal line? OK. Now, you said moving away 
is positive. And you said moving towards is negative, which should make sense. So if we labeled this entire zone, this entire zone is away. The entire positive zone in our velocity time curve is away. And the entire zone in the velocity time curve that is negative is toward. As long as we don't go negative in our displacement. I mean, we did it today. Okay, so what this means is this. You can have a negative displacement later on. You can't have negative displacement with the, with the probe wear because you can't be behind the sensor. But we will eventually, because it's tight, we will eventually you can have negative displacement just like we're going on a never mind. Because it's tight. Is negative displacement more like theoretical or is it like an actual thing? It's where you put your um, reference point. So oh. let's say my reference point is right here. So I'm going to put myself on zero. I'm going to keep each one of these lines one, even though they're feet or they're yeah. centimeters. Uh, so I'm at zero. If I have a velocity of one meter per second, which direction do I go? Uh, you go that that way. way, right? And every second I go one more. And I'm one away, two away, three away, four away, five away, six away. Yeah. Velocity of plus one, I'm becoming one more unit away every second. With a velocity of negative one, I can start at zero, and now I'm negative one away, negative two away, Negative three away, negative four. Away. Wait, wouldn't so wouldn't the displacement just be the same though? Because you're still being displaced the same amount, but just in a different direction. Excellent question. The distance would be the same, but the displacement has a direction. Okay. So, like your uh, your car speedometer, it says miles per hour. Yeah. It doesn't know if you're going north or south. So yeah. So that's why we say distance. it's distance. Yeah. Displacement has a direction. We say four meters north, three kilometers south. So displacement oh. has a direction. Just like speed doesn't have a direction, velocity does. Okay. And so let me call that, that dial in your car a speedometer and not a velocityometer. <laughs> yeah. If it was a velocityometer, there'd also have to be a little compass in the middle that says you're going 65 miles per hour north. Okay. If you combine your compass and your speedometer, then you get a velocityometer. Right. Excellent question. Does that make sense, what you're yeah. just talking about? Yeah. Okay, so distance is just how far. Displacement is how far with the direction. Speed is just how fast. Velocity is how fast with the direction. And acceleration is just positive or negative. We're not going to worry about directions of acceleration. Okay. We're not going to like acceleration north or south. We'll learn about vectors later on. Okay. So when you're saying away you're, and you're moving back, would that be that would be towards right? Mm -hmm. But again, in our in our lab, we can't have a negative d displacement. You can't have a negative d in dis, in, in reality. Negative okay. displacement. Okay, so far so good. Give me a thumbs up. You're ready to move on. I told you this is the single most important day in all of linear motion, and thank you for being all being here. Right. Okay, now back to our velocity time curve. Away toward the whole zone is away. The whole zone is torque. Okay? Now, what can you say about this point? I'm going to erase this to make a difference in the graph, difference in the graph. What can you say at this point? What kind of motion are you having when you're just above zero? Just give me, a, give me an adjective. If your velocity is just slightly above zero. Slow, exactly. When you're just above zero, you are slow. What about if you're just below zero? You're still, you're, slow. you're still slow, exactly. You're just above zero. The difference is this one is slow away and this one is slow <coughs> towards. Does that idea make sense? Yeah. yeah. Again, so I mean, this is a different way of thinking, but you can pick it up because you're the smartest kids in the entire school. So, because you're here. Now, if this is slow, what is this up here? Fast. Fast, yeah. If down there near zero is slow, then way far away from zero is fast. And same thing in the bottom. So if this is zero, then down here is, oh, I'm kind of running into my acceleration graph, so look up here. Down, down here is fast. Fast away, fast toward. Slow away, slow toward. Does this idea make sense? Yeah. 
Cool? Okay. Now there's another concept that is super, super handy, and we're going to use it for months. It's the idea that acceleration is how velocity changes. So if your acceleration is one, you are getting faster every by one every second. So you're starting at one meter per second, the next second you're two meters per second, the next second you're three meters per second, the next second you're four meters per second. Okay, acceleration right is how velocity changes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So acceleration has the unit of meter per second every second. So the unit for displacement is meters. How far you are away from your reference point. The unit for velocity is meters per second. How far you go every second. The unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. Square. Second. Meters per second squared. In other words, how much faster you are getting every second. Does this idea make sense? Yeah. So if I have an acceleration of one and I start with I start motionless with a velocity of zero, in five seconds, how fast am I going? Five meters per second. Courage, five meters per second. Five meters per second. So after one second, I'm going one meter per second. After two meters per second, I'm two, and then three and three, and then four and four. After five seconds, I'm moving at five meters per second. Boogie it. Okay. Now, uh, important point here, in this class, acceleration will never change. Acceleration will be a set value throughout an entire exercise. Okay. It'll be positive something or negative something. Can you have changing acceleration? Mm -hmm. Sure, just not in this class. Okay. We'll talk about what, where positive acceleration comes from when we do forces, or how we use it in real life, but we will never use it in this class. In this class, acceleration will always be positive this the whole time, negative this the whole time. Okay, hang in there guys, I know you can do it. It's only Wednesday. You like it. Oh, I hate this class already. Okay. No, so cool. give me a thumbs up if, you, uh, if you're with me so far. All right, now, here's this important concept I told you we're going to use for a long time. Yeah. If your velocity is positive and your acceleration is positive, what are you doing? Talk with your neighbor. Take, give yourself 10 seconds. If your velocity is positive and your acceleration is also positive, what are you doing? Take 10 seconds. You're, you're speeding away, from, you're accelerating away from the origin. Going yeah, faster. You're going faster every second, the further you're away from the origin. Yeah. So you're going away from origin, but you're getting distance, velocity, acceleration. So it's not displacement. Uh, it's not fast. yet, no, because it, it would have to go negative to be displacement. Okay. That's just distance. But again, again, at this point, this is the positive part of displacement graph, so you can call it displacement. Yeah, we're accelerating okay. away from origin. Okay. Time's up. Someone from the back row. If your velocity is positive and your acceleration is positive, what are you doing? Scott? You're accelerating away from an object, so you're moving faster and faster as you go away from the object. That's what, that's what I wanted. We're moving faster. We have no idea about our orientation. We don't know if we're moving towards or away from a, or a point of reference, but what's important is when velocity and acceleration are the same sign, you are going faster. And positive and positive means you're going faster away. You're exactly right. You're moving far faster away. What if you're negative negative? Are you still speeding up? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're so you're just going the opposite direction. You're moving up toward. Yeah. So say you have a positive velocity and a negative acceleration, yours, would that be you're moving slowing away down. from an object but slowing down as you move away? That's exactly what it means. So then a negative velocity and a positive acceleration, you'd be moving towards an object but accelerating. No, slowing down. Did you say? Right. Slowing down. Slowing yes. Down. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I missed the first part. But yes. So anytime your acceleration agrees with your velocity, you're speeding up. Anytime your acceleration disagrees with your velocity, you're slowing down. Make sense? 
Okay. And to plant a seed, tiny little seed, plant it and we'll revisit it in October. If your velocity and your acceleration are perpendicular, you're moving in a circle. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. But for now, everything is linear. So if your acceleration and your velocity are the same sign, you're speeding up. If your acceleration and velocity are opposite signs, you're slowing down. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me. All right. Any questions? If you have questions, put your hand up. Otherwise, we're going to go back to the lab. We're good? We're good? All right. Back to the lab. Page two. Why is the graph of distance time always positive while velocity time can be negative? Who wants to volunteer their answer? Maybe the underrepresented females in the class. Yeah. Okay, Katie. <laughs> okay, why? Exactly right, why? So velocity can be positive or negative, why can distance time not be negative? Because it can't have negative distance. What? Um, it can't like, move a negative distance away from something. Oh, yeah, you, you, away from the detector, yeah. You can't be behind the detector. Everything we're doing, we are limited by our detector, we are limited by our reference point, and we can't be behind the reference point. But we can have a negative velocity, because that just means we're reducing our displacement. Yes? So say like you had a fancy detector that had like a 360 mm -hmm. degree thing, yeah. well, you still technically couldn't have a negative, because you'd just still be moving away from the object, right? Even if you went technically behind it? Yes. Yeah, you could be negative velocity would basically mean you're, you're ne sorry, negative displacement means you're behind the reference point. So I suppose we could technically take two motion sensors and stick them next to each other and just pass them. But motion sensors practically, electronically, they have a minimum range of about that far, which they don't work. So it'd be like the graph, if you walked toward a detector, it would go up, 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 blah, 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 and then down here. So, but yeah. And we will. We will do it in a simulation. We will have simulations where we will have objects that pass by our reference point. Um, no, next week. Next week, yeah. Not, not, maybe, maybe Friday, actually, depending on how long the free fall lap takes. Um, but yeah, we will do simulations where um, it's just graphing the thing.